Coach, hey, thanks for joining me today on this simple coach to coach interview. Appreciate you taking the time and you know, with the tree in your background, I'm sure you're gearing up for the holidays. So um, appreciate that you can uh, talk soccer with me for a little bit. Glad to be here. Um, all right. So without me prompting you, without, I mean, I did hear overhear the conversation when we met up in Jersey at the PDA. So, uh, but I'm not going to divulge anything. Give me a sense as to how you think your season went this year? Uh, I, I think the first thing I would use is we probably underachieved. Mm -hmm. um, we played we played a good brand of soccer, but we managed to shoot ourselves in the foot almost every game. We, we, <laughs> we, had, we had very few clean sheets. Sheets, yeah, and I noticed. So, you know, we're giving up a goal a game, basically, I think, is what our, we averaged out at, mm -hmm. right? Now, we never yeah. got blown out by anybody. It was one nothing game or a 2-1 game. Um, but usually, we're chasing the game a little bit. So now that everything, you know, you're just trying to get it back to 1-1. Yeah. And it was always, um, they were usually simple, simple things that could be fixed, and we just never could get over the hump. Um, of putting a string together. So our record, we almost went like win, tie, loss, win, tie, loss in that almost the whole way through. And, uh, you know, we would put in very good performances, but we would just have that moment, uh, mm -hmm. uh, 30 seconds in the penalty box and give up a goal. And yeah. now all of a sudden, you know, you're chasing the game and the other team's got something to protect. And, you know, and it could happen, you know, it could happen early. We gave up a number of early goals inside of like five to ten minutes in the start of a game. Yeah, you know, those we lost, are tough. Yeah, we lost to Vassar 2-1. Both goals were the first five minutes of either half. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, we gave up we gave up a couple goals in the last five minutes of game. So then all of a sudden it's 0-0 and then it's one nothing, And you can't yeah. come back. There's not enough yeah. time to come back. No. Nah. So, um, you know, so I think... Overall, that was it. I think what happened to us was um, we probably came out of the pandemic a little differently than we thought. Mm -hmm. We thought we thought some other guys were going to stay. They didn't. Mm -hmm. We lost we lost almost our entire sophomore class because of either um, they just had other interests. They decided not to play soccer anymore. You know, your entire sophomore class, well, not the whole class, but oh, but a bunch of them. So we yeah, went yeah. from we went from having. 10 kids, eight, oh, sorry, eight, eight kids. And we had four active, or sorry, we had four sophomores on a roster. Three were active. One was out with a season ending knee injury from the spring. Mm -hmm. So we only had three active sophomores. So mm -hmm. we were missing in a whole class. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Um, and you know, we had, we had a kid on campus that would have started for us. Probably he mm -hmm. chose to not play anymore. And it, it all came down to, you know, this isn't uncommon. Kids were, you know, they, they found other interests during a yeah. year when the soccer was shut down. And then they realized I didn't really want to ramp back up and get into the commitment level. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, think, I think that that's pretty much gone now because I, I use the phrase, everybody's back on the hamster wheel, right? We're doing the club <laughs> stuff. You, you know, you, you've been on the road. So we're all back there now, right? We're all back yeah, in yeah. club soccer. We're practicing. Yeah. We're Playing, we're going to tournaments yeah. so now it's all back to where it was before yeah um but that year and a half kids found a lot of other yeah. interests you know yeah. and um so found another so, way to get by right found another yeah 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 yeah, yeah. 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 and it, you know and it, it's not so much finding the other way it's also do i have the desire to ramp yeah. back up to the yeah. commitment level that i need yeah. to be at this level yeah, yeah. Very true. Very true. Because he can't. It is. I even notice me, right? Yeah, obviously getting with age, right? Like, I stop for too long. It is twice, three times yes. as hard to get yes. going again, right? So, yes. I mean, yes. I think that's normal. Hey, so did, I mean, on the on a positive side, do you think, did anything surprise you about your team? Did any, any individuals or um, um. just... Yeah, we got we we we've seen some growth in players for sure. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I would necessarily say surprise me, mm -hmm. but um, there are one or two guys that uh, we had hoped were going to step up, and they started you know especially towards the end of the year. Now they're in their second full year of doing it 
now mm-hmm. we're starting to see the field. We're starting mm-hmm. to see some production. So we don't think our cupboards are bare. Mm-hmm. Um, we just had a situation in the spring where we had two fifth-year guys that were, were supposed to be fifth-year guys and decide not to come back. And we lost our leading scorer yeah. to a knee injury yeah. uh, all within 24 hours. So that's mm-hmm. a three-man loss that we're all starters. Yeah. yeah. So, um, you know, uh, so it's hard to recover initially and yeah. by then. And we, and we also had – we had a couple of kids defer that were coming, but uh-huh. they defer after. It was too – I couldn't get new – you know, I couldn't fill yeah. that. Fill that. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so and those, those are things you can't predict or yeah. and you don't even anticipate, you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, so we're back on track. We're looking to probably bring in a little bit bigger class this year mm-hmm. to sort of fill that gap. Fill, yeah, yeah. Um, okay, this is the million dollar question. Remember, it's recorded and, you know, the internet is forever. Yeah. How would you assess your coaching this season? Um, I always assess my coaching on the kids that I can't seem to get the best out of that I... There, there are certain kids that I, I always look at myself. If I, I just get a kid, I think he can play. And then for some reason, we can't get him on the field. For whatever reason, he's not getting it. Right. I always take the blame for that. I, it's personal. Like, I always, where am I failing in that regard? So um, there was a couple of those kids this year where I just, I feel like there's no reason they can't get on the field, but they just, we're not getting, we're not, somehow or another, our messages aren't linking. Right? Yeah. Um, so I think, uh, you know, this is the third time in 20 years that, you know, we finished the regular season six, six and five. We lost in the first round of the playoffs. So mm-hmm. we're six, seven and five at the end. It's only the third time in 20 years we've been below 500. Mm-hmm. So I'm not happy about that. It's not yeah. our standard. So, you know, I guess I'd have to give myself at best a C, mm-hmm. right? Because that's ultimately my name is on the, the, on the yeah. program. And yeah. you know, if I'm gonna um, if I'm gonna be honest, maybe I could have done some things differently. Uh, we're mm-hmm. always self assessing. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I, I think, um, like I said, you know, our team was really close to being really good, mm-hmm. but we never quite got over the hump. So yeah, maybe you know, I, I have to take responsibility for that. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we'll dive into a little deeper in that because I noticed some of the same similarities to what you were saying as I watched games when I could. Um, but before we do, um, France or Argentina? Um, so I think the last two games, France has been exposed a little bit in the back. Mm. I thought England and uh, Morocco showed, you know, I think yeah. they had chances to win the game. Yeah. Having said that, France still managed to score two goals in both games. And keep yeah. and keep clean. Uh, well, not a clean sheet against England, but uh, a clean sheet yeah. against Morocco. Um, on the other side, I think um, I think there's a little bit of destiny involved. Um, I think that Messi finally has a group around him, and I think the young guys that he's playing with. I think if you notice, they're doing the extra running because I think in their mind they're like, if I make this run, there's a good chance I'm going to get the ball. Mm-hmm. So when he gets the ball, he's got options. Yeah, yeah. And I think if he has options, not to mention the ability to go on his own and score, yeah. Um, I'm leaning towards, and I wouldn't have said this at the beginning of the tournament, but I'm leaning towards Argentina. I just think they've gotten better every single game. Um, and I, it's a long time since they lost to Saudi Arabia, isn't it? Yeah, um, yeah. You know? And, yeah. <laughs> uh, and I think the other day I noticed – Morocco was getting in, particularly on France's left side. They left were getting side, in. Yeah. Um, and I think if Argentina gets in like that, they're going to have the final ball. Because and they're better. I think, uh, obviously, they're better yeah, at exploiting better that team. stuff. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. You got, and you have, you know, arguably the best player of yeah. this generation. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. I'm leaning towards Argentina. And, and I'll even go, you know, it's on tape, right? So I'll even go, I could see, <laughs> I could see. Argentina winning like three nothing. Wow! Yeah. Wow! They gave up a lot of chances, and they I just did. Think, they did. They're yeah, lax. I don't know. I don't know if it's like they're bad. I 
against Morocco, I didn't know if that they, they just didn't get it defensively or that they were just too relaxed about it. They're like, yeah, whatever, you know, well, and like, yeah. I'll I thought get they to gave it. up a lot of, a lot of yeah. chances against England against as England well. England too, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, so, but, you know, and I think Argentina is just been defending well. And I think if yeah. Messi gets in those situations, yeah, I'll put my money on him to find the correct ball. Yeah. And those other guys are, are finishing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That young kid up top that they got yeah. who's suddenly like a star. Yeah. Um yeah, it'll be it'll be interesting. It'll be uh it'll be a good game regardless. But three nothing Argentina. I, I I'm not saying that's what it's gonna be. I'm saying I could <laughs> see that. I could see it. Now you're backtracking already. <laughs> no, no, no. I I'll, I'll hang it. You know, hey, if they win three nothing, play this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, um, all right, so I just touch on a, on the rule changes. You had you had five ties. Um, what what are your thoughts on on the lack of overtime now that you've sort of experienced it? Uh, do you do you do you think it was a net positive a negative? And then I'll ask even more importantly: Do you think teams played you for the tie? Do you think that there was any of that going on? Um, so. I, and I was when we talked before. I was on record as saying I voted for the rule. Uh -huh. um, if they come around again, I think I'll vote against it. Wow! So it's wow. one of these. It sounded. It's. I think it sounded great. Um, yeah. The way it was written and the and the theory behind it, I thought was all made sense. Um, and but I think at the end of the day, we had a team get to the national final with ten ties. I just don't. 11. You know, 11 ties, sorry, right. So, yeah. I, you know, I don't think that's necessarily good for our sport, right? I mean, yeah, yeah. So I think if I was looking at it again, uh, I probably would vote against it. Like I said, it seemed like a, a positive rule. I like the theory behind it. You look at the pros, it makes sense. Yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, you go to you go to Man City and you get a point, that's a great point, right? But, yeah. But in college, you only play 15 games, 17 games or whatever. Um, yeah. I think, uh, you know, you know, maybe maybe it's a matter of you only play one overtime or yeah. you know, whatever, whatever. But I think if I was to vote again, I would vote to have overtime. Against, yeah. yeah. Now, nice. you, you know, um, uh, you know, my first game of the year. Uh, overtime, not having overtime was great because I think the team we were, you know, we were playing Montclair and I Claire. thought I was there by the way. Yeah. So yeah, I think you know, as that game wore on, they were getting more and more. If we had to go another 20 minutes, yeah. I'm not sure we hang on. Right. Yeah. But later in the year, there was times where, boy, I would have liked another 20 minutes. Yeah. yeah, so yeah. Where I would have liked another chance, yeah, yeah. you know? So yeah. I think I would change my vote. Yeah. Um, and you know, I think it is something they'll probably look at because I, the number of ties was yeah, ridiculous and predictable. To be fair, well, I got my verbally teeth kicked in for not having Williams on my top twenty-five national rankings to end the season because I was like, they all they had eleven ties. Cut it any which way you want. I'd rather yeah. have a team that's got twenty wins versus eleven. Yeah, so, yeah whatever. It's it's hard. You know, it's such a hard thing. And, you know, and a team like, you know, the, the Nescax, they'd only play like 15 games. 15 right? games. Yeah, maybe yeah. Maybe it's 15 now, whatever. Yeah, so yeah. I didn't go and look. They had yeah. six, six wins. I mean, they're always good. Don't get me wrong. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'm not right. taking that away from them. Right. I'm not, not taking that right. away from them. But right. at some so, at some point, you have to get the results. But you bring up a good point. Like a team goes to Man City after a week of training, basically, trying – they're going, let's just say they're going for a result, and if they can get a tie, hey, great. Whereas I question the number of ties. Was it, I don't want to say by design, or was it fatigue, or, you know, those midweek games that are away that are so hard, like you're just kind of, dre like, it doesn't seem intentional. It just seems like that's the end result because two teams Correct. It out. You know I what I mean? I don't know if yes. that makes sense, but nobody, yeah. I didn't play a game this year where anybody sat in. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so yeah. that was never the issue. Um, I think the ties come more from the fact that 
you know, it's hard to score goals. Score goals, yeah. And, and having those players who can score goals and win games on their own, which, mm-hmm. for example, our example is Man City, right? They got yeah. guys in front who can win a game on their own. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, so you could sit in all you want, and they can still beat you. Um, yeah, so yeah. that's why the result is so important. Um, yeah. But with us, I think it, you know, it. quite frankly, you know, if you look at probably every Division Three game, I mean, or 90% of the Division Three games, Every team has a number of chances to win games. They just yeah. don't finish. Yeah, you know, yeah, just, yeah. I mean, we, we, I could say that about us. Like the games yeah. that we lost or tied, we, we definitely could. I mean, like I said, we weren't outplayed by really anyone. So we could have easily won the game. All we had to do was finish, you know. Yeah, uh, yeah. Or, you know, for example, we tied St. Lawrence. We were ahead. We, mm-hmm. gave, we scored. They scored a goal 30 seconds later. Yeah. That's on us, right? So yeah, then we yeah. go ahead again, and they get a goal with five minutes left. Yeah. That's on us. We, you know, yeah. it was we, if we defend better, we yeah. win those games. Now, is it a good point for St. Lawrence because it was at our place? Um, every, you, you know what? Every point's a good point because you got yeah. stand. But I don't think anybody, you know, nobody. I didn't go anywhere set up to sit in and tie. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. I don't. So I think. I think you, you well, look at, yeah, let's say, yeah. take, take Williams is, is the example, right? Because everybody's mm-hmm. aware that right. they got that far and they proved they're yeah. a good team. They got to yeah. the final. Um, but in those 10 ties or 11 ties, how many of them are losses if they go to overtime? Yeah. Right. And yeah. what if, what if only half of them are losses? Yeah. Okay. So now there are, you know, maybe they win 11 games, but they have seven losses. Yeah. Yeah. They probably don't get a bid. No. Yeah. Right? I mean, just the way it works. Yep. But this year, uh, you know, you had teams that yeah. had it was a perfect tough, storm. Tough better, seven, one, and seven. Yeah. Yeah. You know, they only lost once, though. Yeah. yeah. Oh, and then, and then to me, like you're, you're defeating the purpose if a tie is a tie, but now you're giving it value, right? Like you're saying, a tie is, there is such a thing as a good tie and a bad tie. A good tie is going to RPI and tying. Right, but it's a bad tie for RPI. RPI. And once you do that, you're like, well, then why are you doing? T- why why are you counting them that way? Why don't right. you just battle it out to find who the winner is? Because that's ultimately what you're trying to do. You're giving half points, right? Like right. I, that's that's the part that bothers me. And I think that's why I basically said they're not team again. Using Williams as an example, I just couldn't, in good conscience, be like a team with eleven ties is going to be ranked. Much to yeah. much to and a lot of people's unhappiness. And, and, and again, I think you know, I, I think we we both agree that you know, there's no doubting that they're a good team. Exactly. No, I'm, I'm there's not no doubting yep. it's a tremendous program and all that. Yep. It's just the way the year went. Correct. You're only judged on your year. Year. Yeah. It's hard to wrap your head around it because that would have never happened in the past. No. Because even if, even if we had overtime, yeah, and they had ten ties in the regular season, there's no way yeah. they get a bid. No. Right, because no. you would have had yep. overtime, and people would have said, "You have to win some of your games." Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's that a value cool. with overtime. There is a value to win, right? Like yeah. there's a value to winning um, that probably gives it more of a premium than the tie, right? Because now you're right. being accepting of the time. So, right. anyhow, and that league is so good. The next, yeah, yeah, so yeah, yeah. Ties, uh, having teams battle to a tie is not a crazy idea. No, no, no. Because everybody's no. talented. I mean, look, they won the NESCAC. What did they do? They tied Tufts and then beat them in PKs and then tied Khan in the final and beat right. them on PKs, right? right? So I get I get that. I get the difficulty of the league, and I, I, I do get that. But I do go back to the season matters and wins matter more, right? right. Like that's sort of my, that's, that's sort of my thing. But um, right. all right, let's jump into the season for a little bit. Um, because you, you mentioned something, and I'm like, yeah, I guess I maybe I know what I'm talking about sometimes. Um, so you went six, seven, and five. And and I, actually, I'll use the Montclair UMass, two, your first two games of the season. And it just sem- seemed to me like you just couldn't get momentum going, right? Like, or, or I don't, maybe that's not the right, or consistency of your performances. And, um, so you go to Montclair, and I think, look, you eked out that point. But I thought you guys set yourselves up well against a, Mon- a really talented Montclair team, right? Like, they, some of those guys are outrageous. Um, 
And then you go, and then you, you're like, hey, we get to go back home two days later. We got UMass Boston, and then you end up losing, one, you know, 2-1. Like, and it was like, hey, you got the point. Oh, okay. Start right. over. Yeah. So I don't know if you could comment on that. If, so if so you just described, you're 100% correct. That's exactly how the season went, right? So, you know, the, the UMass Boston game, um, you know, uh, the, we gave them two goals. And not, not to take anything away from them, but, you know, the, the, the two goals were just awful defending. One, mm -hmm. my goalkeeper caught the ball mm -hmm. and trying to start a counterattack too fast, dropped it, mm -hmm. and the guy toe pokes it in. Yeah. And now we're down. All of a sudden, you're down 2 nothing. Yeah. And the first one was also a, a comedy of errors on our part. Now, they took advantage of it, and they get credit for that. Yeah, yeah. Um, but then, you know, so then, then we actually go and we play a pretty good game at Plattsburgh. We get a win. We beat Keene State. We get a win. Uh, so now we're 2-1-1. One, and one. Uh, and then, you know, then I think we play Oneonta and we get a tie. And you're like, hey, okay. <laughs> yeah, I'll take then, that. Then it just, then yeah. we go back and we play. I don't remember who was next. But, you know, then you just, we can't, we could, we never got. And, and I can speak to it because it's happened to us in the past. We just never got that uh, that point where we got on a roll. Yeah. So confidence built. Yeah. We were always, felt like we were always trying to put out fires. Fires, yeah. yeah. It was just, we just could not not make a mistake. Yeah. Uh, and so, you know, we, 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 um, you know, we just never got it going uh, in that, it, it, to what, to your point of like, yeah. you know, we're feeling good. We felt good about the Montclair. We were like, okay, you know, we, they were better. We got a break there you when know, one of their top guys wasn't playing. Playing, yeah. You know, and we got the tie. And if you had asked me when I scheduled that game, would you take a tie your first game of the year at Montclair? I would say yes. And yeah. it, I'd rather win it, but I'll yeah, take it. Yeah. Because you know they're good. They're always good. Yeah. Oh. Um, and then, and then, you know, the next game, you know, UMass Boston, they're a good team, but we're yeah. as good as they are, and we just yeah. gave the game away. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and then it started to just go back and forth and back. Yeah, and forth. yeah. I and mean, then, you're right. You're, it is literally – I'm just looking at your schedule yeah. now. It's like tie, loss, loss, win, win, tie, loss, win, tie, loss, tie, <laughs> win, <laughs> tie. Like, it's like, hey, oh, oh God. Exactly. Oh, my, you know, and then by midseason, you're exhausted because you're like – we just can't seem to get it rolling. Right. But then, you know, then you get like towards the end, mm -hmm. uh, we went, we had an opportunity in our last three games um, to finish our, our controlled our own destiny. We could have yeah. finished second in the league. Yeah. If we win our last three games, if we beat Vassar, if we, if we beat Ithaca, Vassar, Clarkson in that order, yeah. we would have finished second. Yeah. And, you know, the season's been kind of up and down. It's all yeah, over yeah. the place. You know, we go That's to Ho we go to Hobart and RIT, and we have a horrible weekend. We get a yeah. point out of two games, yeah. and then we come back, and all of a sudden, we put ourselves right back in the mix. And by the yeah. way, hey, you can finish second and host a semifinal, get yeah. a bye and host a semifinal, right? Yeah. And if, if somehow or another the top seed loses and you win, you get to host the final. Yeah. So, and so we put together. You know, we beat we beat Ithaca. We go to Vassar. We play well, but we give up two goals at the beginning of each half. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then, um, and then, you know, then we put without a doubt, our best performance total, like the whole package, we play Clarkson, we win the game three, nothing in a game that was essentially a playoff game. Yeah. Clark Clarkson needed to win. Yeah. Uh, we needed a win or a tie and we were in, uh, and a win we, we knew we got to host a game mm -hmm. they needed to win. So it's essentially a, it's a it's a knockout it's, game. It, it's a real deal game. If we lose if we lose, we could have been out as well based yeah. on other results. Yeah. And we go out there and we do we do what I've been waiting for all year. We score the goals and we defend well yeah. and we kind of control the game. And I think okay, maybe we finally turn that corner. Yeah. We host the quarterfinal against RAT and we give up a goal four minutes in on a stupid you know one of the a silly mistake where. A defender calls the keeper. So everybody else stops, but the keeper didn't call it. And this um, is we talked about it all year. So now the ball now the ball yeah, drops. drops. RIT, RIT yeah, takes advantage of it. Yeah. Right. And then in overtime, um, you know, the same kind of thing. We just make yeah. a bad decision and the ball yeah. gets they go in and we don't have enough time to, to we were I was sitting down writing down my peak. It was getting that late. Like who's gonna be my PK guys? 
Yeah. Uh, watching the game, I'm you know starting to organize my thoughts, and uh, you know, and then they give up a goal, and now it's like, okay, we got two minutes to come back. Yeah, forget uh, it. You're not you going to do that. No. Yeah, you're not going to do that. Yeah, yeah, no, no. So, um, um it, you know, I I will say that's funny because you don't get. I mean, every single one of your games is like a one goal game. Yep. Like where you're on the losing end, it's a one goal game. Yeah. Which has got to make it all the more frustrating, right? Because you yeah. you're that close and especially if you let them up, let them score on a mistake of some sort. That's got to be the hardest thing to yeah, overcome. Yeah. What doesn't show in the score line is the chances you miss. Yeah, yeah. Where you know like we we missed a boatload of chances in the second half against Oneonta, you know, mm. like we, we had a, we, I wouldn't say there were clear cut chances, but we probably had a little bit more of the, of the possession in that, in that second yeah. half of that game. Um, and then in the, against RIT, we had, we had three legitimate chances that were inside the penalty spot, like uh, inside yeah. the other yards. And we don't, we don't even hit the net. Like we don't even uh, hit the frame. Right. Think, yeah. Yeah. Um, and it's like, the, we could have been up two or three before the game ended, even though we gave up the early goal. Mm -hmm. So, and you know, not that they didn't have chances also, yeah, but, yeah. but you know, but you, you, oh, you look at them, you go, man, we lost two, one today and we could have scored another three. Three. Yeah. 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 That's that, the that worst. Definitely factors in, yeah. um, you know, we were, like I said, we were, you know, we were that close. Yeah. We could've, the yeah. season could have easily gone the other way. Yeah. Yeah. No, you just, like I said, you just look at the time, the score lines and you're like, you know, this is not. Now, if you were losing games three nothing, your words would ring hollow. You know what I mean? Like, right. I get, I get it, I get it, but you'd have to have four opportunities to their three, right? right. Uh, but at one nothing or two one loss, and you're like, man, I could totally see that because I've been. Everyone's been in those games, right? Where you're well, like, if you're a soccer player, right, yeah. you know, every, you know. First of all, I think one of the things that drives the non soccer American fans crazy mm -hmm. is that the in uh, in soccer the best team doesn't always win. Yeah, yeah. Now in yeah. in American football the best team wins ninety percent of the time. In time. Yeah, yeah. Right. So uh, and, and as a soccer guy you know that you're like you know you got to score if you don't score yeah. you know it's a game of goals to, doesn't gotta, matter who it's a game of goals like right. that's what it ultimately right. comes down to. Right. So you got to keep yeah. clean sheets too. Yeah. You know yeah. the number of times. That I mean, I don't know off the top of my head, but we went into the locker room at halftime and said, "Look, guys, we keep a clean sheet, we win the game." Yeah, plain and especially simple. Lot, especially in a lot of those ties. Yeah, keep a clean sheet, we win the game. You know, we didn't. Yeah. I don't think we fought back for a tie. I can't remember to be fair. I think we yeah. gave up the tie. tie yeah. Time. So, yeah. like, if you keep a clean sheet, just keep a clean sheet for forty-five minutes. Yeah. You win the game because you're ahead. Now yeah. we're not going to sit in and just protect it. We want to yeah. keep playing how we're playing, get another one. Yeah. But. Uh, you know, we just, we struggled. And, yeah. you know, and if you look at, you know, I went back and I, cause I show the team this stuff. If you look at the teams that we've had that have done well, and just on average, we're somewhere between eight to 10 clean sheets a year. Yeah. So that's why you win, right? You know? Yeah. And, yeah. Yeah. And, and the teams it. that go the furthest, the teams that have the most clean sheets. Most of these. Yeah. Yeah. You still oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. That's it. Um, so, so let me. What What do you think went right? Um. Well, I think I think the number one thing is there was no quit in this group. Yeah. They they never stopped. Uh, it would have been easy to get very frustrated. Um, mm -hmm. You know, uh, especially you know uh, after even like early, even after the first game. But I think there's a stretch. You know, the weekend in in out west when we went to RIT and Hobart, that mm -hmm. would have been an easy weekend because you know. We gave up a we against uh, RIT. We we gave up a goal. We have a guy sent off right at the beginning of the second half. We fight mm. back and tie mm. the game down mm. a man. Okay. Then we go to Hobart the next day and we have the lead, oh, and we man. give yeah. and we give up a goal. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then and then we give up. I think we had the lead. But I know either way. But I know we gave up a goal with like thirty seconds left to lose. Mm. You know, so it would have been easy to just get down on yourself. And, yeah. and but we didn't do that. They worked hard every day. Yeah. We kept going. We believed that, you know, that all we have to do is get in. Let's just get in. We got a chance. We can play with anyone in the league. Mm -hmm. Let's get into the tournament. And we believed that until the last whistle was blown 
in the quarterfinal. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, that was a positive. Um, like I said, we got some kids that didn't play as freshmen, started to see some time, especially as the season went on. So, mm-hmm. you know, like, the cupboards aren't bare. Uh, yeah. That's cool. You know, one of the things I probably um, – probably – underestimated was the fact that we had a, a number of guys that had been in the program and mm-hmm. they were waiting for their turn and now it was their time but they hadn't really played a lot mm-hmm. so they they weren't necessarily young but they were inexperienced yeah yeah so you know and they yeah. were like you know they watched they for two years they watched a, a team play that both that won most a majority of their games mm-hmm. they thought oh it's it you know it's easy it's well, easy it's not, no. <laughs> yeah, they made it look easy, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, so you know, so I think that that's it, and you know, I think mm-hmm. I think also now, uh, you know, one of the things is you every now and again you get a readjustment period. Yeah, it's a wake up call for the guys that are on the on the program. You know. Yeah, yeah. Um, we can't we can't make weightlifting mandatory, right? We're yeah, not allowed. Yeah. Not allowed. But it's also not mandatory that you're on the team. Yeah. So yeah. you know, if you're not going to put in the time and the stuff, the, the, put in the work. Someone's going to take your spot. Yeah, I um, in all my conversations, I like to talk about the spring. And my next um, next question is about what are you doing in the spring? But the it's very clear to me that, and I don't know if athletes, student athletes, get it. Just to me. It strikes me as your spring and what you do in the spring and then the summer, obviously, as you're gearing up. But definitely the spring has a very, very big impact in one, how you do, how you perform as a player, but then two, how your team does. Um, I agree with you 100 percent, even though at Division three, we only get 16 opportunities to work with them. Um, I, I'm a guy who believes that if you use every one of those opportunities correctly, your team is going to get better. Better. Yeah. Um, also, in the spring, you're not pre- really preparing for outside competition, right? We have one day mm. and you spend some time. So you're really self-assessing all the time and yeah. evaluating your roster and training yeah. your guys and really working on yourself. Whereas, you know, in the fall, you got a game on Wednesday, you got a game on Saturday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're just trying to... You're trying to get ready for your next opponent, make yeah. yourself better, not you know, all at once. But in the spring, it's all about us. Yeah. And yeah, we're gonna go and we go play our game and we'll prepare for that team, but we're not scouting them. We're yep. just gonna show up and play, right? Yeah. And, um, and we're then we're gonna assess our roster. So the yeah. spring for me is is vitally important. And mm. um, you know, because we really do focus in and we're looking at, you know, because Sometimes you have freshmen, they're not quite ready in the first semester. So now, yep. they're, and they're automatically different in the second semester. You see, oh, yeah. Well, they're more confident. They confident, walk yeah. But now you start to see, okay, what am I going to get out of him next fall? In fall, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, big, big, in a lot of respects, spring is, I'd like to figure out a way to do a direct line, like look at some information data, yeah. like how you're, you know, that would be really interesting. But uh, I got a real job. That I have to do. <laughs> that's um, your retirement job. Your yeah, job. yeah, yeah. That's my retirement job. Um, hey, so uh, and I don't. I, oh, you, I think you graduate eleven, or you have eleven seniors and grad students. I don't know how many of those are not returning. At least by your roster online. Right. So we're losing uh, six guys. Six guys. Um, like, how impactful were those guys to to the team? In their last um, four years or whatever. so uh let's see so luke was our starting goalkeeper the last two years yep. he's graduating uh ben kogan uh and uh joaquin rodriguez and paul uh silva were our three starting midfielders yeah so you know uh, and, yeah. and uh you know paul's paul was first team all league last two yep. years i think in my opinion ben kogan should have been a first team guy uh, mm-hmm. He didn't even get recognized, which to me is a shock because he's yeah. a tremendous player. We could have played him as our nine up front, and he would have mm-hmm. been, you know, he he would he would have been great. So mm-hmm. he we're gonna so he's a big those three guys. Um, Joaquin is an interesting fact because he didn't really play much his first two years. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, he came from Florida. Mm-hmm. He was a little bit, um, you know, playing the hot weather kind, not running as much. You know, 
and then finally caught on to what it takes and really had a good two years after that. So, yeah. so those two are, you know, those are big. Pedro Lara came off the bench and Liam McDermott um, was also off the bench at times mm. um, and started a game here or there. And, you know, those guys will be missed for sure. Yeah. Um, you know, obviously the three starters plus the goalkeeper, um, you know, the goalkeeper, we have a guy, the midfielders, we think we have guys, you know, but we're also recruiting, trying to find Yeah, them. yeah, yeah. So, um, you know, so, uh, we, you know, we can also move guys around, guys that were playing in other spots because yeah. they were there. Yeah. So, um, you know, so uh, so it's it's a loss. You, you know, you, you never, you never like, replace guys. You just put new guys in and get a different. <laughs> yeah, yeah, know, yeah. You just keep, yeah, yeah. They are, they're all individuals, right? They are who they are. Yeah, yeah. That's hard though, right? Like if you have your, your midfielders are all gone at once, like that's, yeah, that, well, that's Paul, gotta be tough. It is. To be fair, Paul played on the width as well. As yeah, a yeah. Okay. And we had another guy who plays in there. Played, so we, yeah. we have one guy for yeah, sure. Yeah. That's the experience. Yeah. 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 And he's a, he's a very good player too. Yeah. Yeah. What does your, what does your, I don't not in terms of players, but what does your recruiting class look like? Like, what are you? I, I asked this from somebody the other day. Like, are you looking for positions? Are you looking for guys who are going to make the, um, you know, who are going to come in and sort of raise the competitive level on the field? You know, when you're preseason and all that. Does that make sense? Yes, all yeah. of that. Right. So, mm -hmm. typically, where we start is we're, we're not as concerned what position you played before you get to us. Yeah. With the, with the exception of, obviously, goalkeepers. Goalkeeper, yeah. Um, but usually, you know, kids end up where they were. Mm. But we also, we're going to put them where we think that they can succeed mm. at our level, right? So mm -hmm. what we really do is we sort of have a checklist, right? We're looking for technical guys, tactically aware. We look at their measurables, their their – the stuff yeah. you can measure, speed, yeah, height, speed. Like, yeah, yeah. And then the, the psychological piece where we want to know if they're going to fit in with us. Yeah, you know, we we want all good apples, right? So that's our first thing. Obviously, there are some spots. So, for example, center backs. You need that's a separate. That's a kind of special guy, right? Yeah, a striker yeah. who scores goals. Yeah. You know, if you can find those, so we're we're looking for the best players we can get to make our roster better. And, mm. and one of the things we do look at is, will he make our overall, uh, overall depth of the squad better? Like, is he going to be, is he better? Let's say he doesn't play next year. Is he better than a kid who didn't play last year? So the level yeah. rises. So the yeah, level yeah, rises. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so yes, all, all of that is factored in. Yeah, yeah. Okay. All right, so this is more particular to you just because of the RPI. And we talked about this in our first interview about just how different it is to recruit for a place like RPI than it is for a traditional liberal arts school like, like Vassar, right? Um, and, and maybe it's, I don't know if this is a case of, you know, sociology of me and what I, what I see, but it, is it easier to find guys that would be interested in RPI just because of the emphasis on STEM? And it seems like there's a lot of, a lot more kids interested in STEM or am I off beat there? So if you, so if you're asking me if it's easier to find guys other than, <laughs> rather than females, yeah. the is yes. <laughs> so, so yes, it's easier to get, to get men. Yeah. Um, now our, our, our women's programs and all the different sports, it's getting better for sure. Yeah. Oh uh, yeah, I didn't even think about. Oh my gosh, I thought that was a joke. No, you're right. Like that's hard. Yeah, is, yeah. yeah. But it's gotten better because a lot yeah. of you know, cause high schools are pushing STEM now. Yeah, right? yeah, right. Um, uh, so I think it, it's it's different. Uh, the thing is that if you're going after a, a guy who's real, like if we're not going after the kid who's business, because we have business school, right? Oh yeah, yeah. So we still get some business school kids, but you're talking about the engineers, the computer scientists. Yeah. Or just the plain old math and science guys. Yeah. Um, the one thing is what I did. It took a while to figure it out. I, I may have talked about this in the last time, but now that I that you, you, we're sort of fishing in a smaller pond because not mm -hmm. everybody is in that pond. Yeah. You know, STEM guys are STEM guys. Yeah. You know, and and you know, if you're a kid who 
for example, wants computer science or you want engineering, you've probably thought about that during your three years of high school. It's high school, yeah. Because you know, you're drawn towards those classes. You're taking mm-hmm. math classes and science classes. Yeah. Um, so you're a little bit more focused. You know, it's not like, you know, a lot of like, you know, I went to a liberal arts school and yeah. there's a lot of people the first couple of years at a liberal arts school that are wan- wandering around taking classes, trying to figure out what they're going to do. What they want to do. Yeah. That doesn't happen too much to us. That's, yeah, the, the yeah. Kids come in for the most part. They know the biggest question sometimes is whether I want to be a mechanical engineer or a chemical yeah, engineer, engineer, right? Yeah. But I know I want to be an engineer. Yeah, that's crazy regardless of a decision. But <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah. Okay. And, and a lot of the classes you take the first or second year are the same anyway. Same, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Um, so for I, it ha- what's happened now, to be fair, is that we've gotten ourselves, to, uh, we're, we're established ourselves well enough now as a program that now we get interest from business kids that we used oh, to have. Oh, yeah. System, Not right? good. So yeah. now we're getting... So now our roster is probably a little less engineering heavy than it used to be. Mm-hmm. We're probably a mirror of the school, you know, 60, yeah. 65% engineers, computer guys, business guys. Whereas yeah. when I first started trying to build the program, I was probably 85% engineers. And, yeah. Because that was our niche. That's yeah, how I can yeah. get kids. We've, we've managed now to be able to, you know, what, say we go to watch a game and we, we're watching a kid who wrote us. But there's mm-hmm. two other kids on the field we really like. Mm-hmm. Well, now we're in a position where we can actually write those kids. They'll look at our school, check out our soccer program, and go, you know what? I didn't even know about them. I'm interested. Mm-hmm. That happens more in the last you know, 10 years or so. That's happened more. Yeah, yeah. First 10 years, not as much. Not as much. Let me – this – do – because you guys have a grad school as well, right? You have graduate studies there. Are you looking at all at the transfer portal for guys just to have that one year of eligibility to come in? Or yes, I think some schools are more than others, but I, I yeah, yeah, we are. We're looking at it. Um, you know, we, we're we're using it. We don't. We're not exactly a transfer school. The grad yeah. school would be the one reason usually. Yeah. What uh, like. We had a transfer this year that came in and, you know, his, the reason he wanted to transfer us to us is because the school he was at, he was just like, he felt like he needed to be at a better school. Yeah. He, yeah. He, the engineering program he was in, he just didn't feel cut it. Right. right? So, uh, he, he wanted to go to a better engineering school. Right. So he, so he transferred to us. Um, but overall, you know, we're not, we don't get a lot of JUCOs. We yeah. Don't, yeah. Um, so we might get a kid who goes to a school for a year and realizes I'd like a bigger challenge or I want yeah. to go to a better school. Um, yeah. I went to you know, a school A. I got yeah. my GPA up, so now I can get into this yeah. one. This yeah. where I wanted to go. Yeah. So that kind of thing. But we are investigating the transfer portal for the grad schools for mm-hmm. sure. Because yeah, we yeah. do have a grad school. You do have grad, I mean, like fundamental, right. like real deal grad right. work is right. being done at RP. So we would be foolish not to look at yeah. it. Yeah. Now, it hasn't exactly, we haven't seen it take off yet. Mm-hmm. But we're not going to stop looking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you got to right if it's right. presented there. Like that would be foolish not to. So. Right. Um, and especially now that you can go, you can go D one to D three now. So yeah, you can get you know, and there are like particularly the a lot of the state schools they get a lot of D one transfers. Guys Transfer, who went there yeah. who yeah. couldn't play and then they came back. I mean, you right. look at Montclair's roster. That the guy played for St. John's for two years. Yeah. And yeah, then he, goes, yeah. he comes and plays for them. And yeah. that kid's tremendous, right? I don't have a kid yeah. on my roster who played for St. John's. <laughs> you know? Why not? Come on, get yeah, cracking. <laughs> um, all right. Hey, coach, this was fantastic. Really do, really do appreciate it. Love talking the game with you. Like, it's really, you really helped me think about things. And um, uh, wish you and your family all the best. Wonderful Christmas. You know, a lot of blessings and all that stuff. So, same to you. Thanks for thanks for doing this. And you know, anytime I'm, uh, you know, like you, you know, I, I love to talk soccer. So, yeah. anytime you need anything, if you need a blurb, whatever it is, just let me know. I'll, okay, I'll this is great. Have a great we'll holiday, and I'm sure we'll see you. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Take care. If you like this show, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss future episodes. You can also find me on anti-social media on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Thanks.
This is a message from my chief marketing.